In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use Shader Graph in the Universal Render Pipeline in Unity to build a tropical water shader. Let's start by adding a plane into our scene for our water. We're going to want to add waves to our water a little later, so it's important to use a plane with enough subdivisions to allow for vertex displacement. Because of this, we're using a custom plane with extra subdivisions here. Next, let's create a new shader graph by choosing Create, Shader, PBR Graph. And let's also create a material from it by right-clicking on the shader and choosing Create, Material. Then let's assign the material to our plane here. Right now, the water is looking a little murky, so let's start by at least making our plane look a bit more like the water you'd expect to see on a tropical island like this. The color and transparency of water will usually change relative to the amount of light passing through it. So we're going to want to be able to simulate this in our shader. Water closer to our surface should be more transparent and brighter, whereas water further from the surface should be darker and more opaque. We can use data from our camera and screen to calculate the depth of our scene and influence the color of our water relative to the surrounding geometry. It's worth noting that you may need to enable these options in the Render Pipeline Asset settings first. In our shader graph, let's start by changing the surface type to transparent. We want to create a gradient that fades based on its depth from the water surface. We'll do this by using the depth buffer of the camera. Let's create a camera node, and then let's multiply the far plane by the depth texture on our camera. We then need to localize this into the screen space of the mesh. So let's create a screen position node and set the mode to raw. Using a split node, let's get the clip space position, which is the A channel here, and send it to an add node. Let's then connect a new vector one property called depth here. And finally, let's subtract our screen space position value from the multiplied value of our depth buffer. Let's see how this looks by hooking it into the albedo of our master node. We now have a gradient on our plane. The darker areas of our gradient represent areas of our scene with geometry underneath our plane. We can use the depth value to adjust the edge depth and adjust the white and black parts of our gradient. We probably want to adjust the strength of this gradient and have some control over the edges. If we go back into the shader, let's connect our result here into a new multiply node and create a new vector one property called strength. Let's also set this property as a slider and limit the value between 0 and 2. Finally, let's hook this into a clamp node so that our black and white values never exceed 0 or 1. In a shader, black is typically represented by the float value 0 and white by 1, so we want to make sure that we clamp our values within that range to make sure we don't get any unexpected results. Now, we can use the strength value on our material to soften the blend between the light and dark parts of the gradient and we now have a great way to define the shallow and deep parts of our water. With this setup, we can use the brightness values of our gradient to blend between two different color values. In Shader Graph, let's add two new color properties into our blackboard called Deep Water Color and Shallow Water Color. Then, let's add a LERP node and connect the colors to our A and B values, and let's use the gradient we created as the mask for our LERP node. Let's connect this to our albedo port on the master node. The result of this process will be a blend between our shallow color and our depth color based on the gradient we created. We also need to make sure that the alpha values between the two colors will blend as well. So let's use a split node and connect it to the alpha of our master node. We also need to make sure our alpha clip threshold is set to zero so that we're not cutting off parts of our mesh. We can now tint and adjust the opacity of the gradient using our color values to create the tropical look for our water. We also want to disable shadows on our mesh to make sure that the water looks right when it's fully transparent. So this is a pretty good start, but we could do with some more detail on the surface to make it look a bit more like water. One way to simulate the look of waves on water is to use two normal maps moving in different directions. 
Let's start by creating texture 2D properties in our Blackboard as our main and secondary normals, and then connect both of these to their own sample texture 2D node. Then we'll add a tiling and offset node and set the tiling up to 100 on each of these so that the texture fits nicely onto our large water plane. Now, let's offset each of our textures over time. Let's add a time node and connect the time to two divide nodes. We want both of these to move slowly, so let's set our first to 50 and our second to negative 25 so that it moves in the opposite direction. Then let's add our two normals together and connect the output to our master node. Our scene now has some texture, but it's a bit too aggressive, and it could do with fading off as we reach the shoreline. Let's add a control for the normal strength, and let's use our gradient to influence the fall off. In our shader graph, let's add a normal strength node and connect our normal map. Let's add a lerp node and create a vector 1 property in our blackboard called normal strength and connect it to the B value of our node. Let's then use the depth gradient from earlier and connect it to the T value of our lerp node. Now we have a nice amount of texture on our water and it looks a bit more dynamic. Water should be reflective, so let's also add a smoothness property to Blackboard and connect it to our master node. Now, as we increase the smoothness value, the normal maps influence the light information on our plane and create some awesome looking specular highlights and reflections. Next, let's look at how we can add some motion to the water. By passing noise over the UV of our texture, we can use the brightness values to offset the vertices of our water along the y-axis. Let's create a new position node and make sure that it's set to object space. Then, let's split out this node. Let's create a new vector 1 property called displacement. Let's also add a gradient noise node and set the scale to about 20. Then let's multiply them together. This is going to act as the mask for our vertex offset. So we can connect this into the Y property, which is the green channel of a new combined node, and then connect the R and B channels from our object position. Let's then connect this to the vertex position of our master node. And if we take a look, we can now control the displacement value of our plane and we've got a wave-like pattern. All we need to do now is add some motion to it so that the displacement travels along our plane like a wave would. Back in Shader Graph, let's add a tiling and offset node to the UV of our gradient noise. And just like before, let's add a time node and divide it by about 100. This will give us more fine-grained control of the wave speed. Then let's connect this as our offset. Our water now moves up and down at different points, looking like waves are passing over it. This is the starting point for a basic water shader, but there's a lot more things we could do to improve upon it. If we wanted to take our shader further, we can take a look at the shader in the Boat Attack demo to explore how it expands on this principle by integrating caustic effects, reflections, underwater refraction, and multiple foam layers. Fortunately, Shader Graph makes it fast and easy to iterate on shaders and allows you to experiment with different results. For more information on the Universal Render Pipeline in Unity, and to take a look at the more advanced water system used in the boat attack demo, follow the link in the description down below. Thanks for watching.